Hot of the press, Miro just released the follow-up to the Bonaire Diver with two really good manual wind chronographs featuring the historical Landeron Calibre 248. Three years in the making, well worth the wait, meet the Antigua. Hi, my name is Tom, some of you might know me as Bowl of Salmon on Instagram. The aim of this channel is still to bring you a closer look at watches and brands that appeal to me. And the Antigua models tick all the boxes. Now a full disclosure, I met with Stan, the owner of the brand last year, and for this release I've helped to work on the press images and video for the new release. Now this video stands separate from any invoiced work I did, and I'm just happy to call this one a bit of a scoop. If the name Miro doesn't ring a bell, Miro is a micro brand that was launched in 2018 and had a successful first release with the vintage inspired Bonaire Diver. Today they are back with two new chronographs inspired by the Antigua Yacht Regatta in the Caribbean. I can hear you thinking, wait, water and chronographs usually don't mix? Well, this one is waterproof up to 100 meters. Two models are introduced. There is the glossy black Miho black version and the cream colored soft sand. 100 pieces of each watch will be made available. The reason that this production is limited is because of the movements used, but more on that later. If we have a look at the dimensions, the watch sits in a 39mm case with the bezel measuring 40mm. The watch sits 13.5mm high including the crystal. The lug to lug is 486 There is a unidirectional scratch resistant sapphire bezel for that Bakelite vintage aesthetic. A crystal sapphire with anti-reflective coating can be found on the front and the back of the watch. And this brings us to the movement. Next to the beautiful dial design, the movement is arguably the centerpiece of the watch. Through the open case back, we can admire the Swiss made new old stock Landeron Calibre 248. No longer in production, Stan was able to source 200 of these now discontinued movements. New old stock meaning unsold, unused factory sealed movements. Of course, these have been completely overhauled and the bridge of each movement has been engraved with the Mero logo. The movement has a power reserve of 41 hours. Whether you pick up the glossy black dial or the creamy dial, the soft pastel colors on the subdials will grab your attention. The color palette is inspired by the soft colors that you often come across when you walk or sail around in the Caribbean. Think houses, beaches, the blue crystal water. Yet, if you see golf racing colors, mine too. After all, it has a tachymeter running around the dial. Whatever version you pick, the Big Eye 45 minute subdial at 3 o'clock provides enough contrast on that beautiful layered dial. There is plenty of attention to detail on the dial. The applied faceted and polished indices and the lovely looking vintage loom plots that get the Fotina just right. For the hands we find a dauphine shaped hour and minute hand and an orange lollipop seconds hand. I'm sure by now you know how much I appreciate orange accents on a watch. The running seconds hand at 9 o'clock is inspired by the shape of a nautical compass. There is just the right amount of text to be found on the dial. The brand name at 12, the model name depth rating and the word Swiss at 6. I really mean it when I say nothing bothers me on this dial and it still has plenty of elements to keep you smiling down on your wrist and have an extended honeymoon period with it. Daring but never over the top. Of the two on first impression the cream dial stood out to me most. But that's just because I have too many black dials already. Yet, the high gloss black dial does have this classic chic look to it. Honestly, it's a coin toss for me at the moment. The 316L steel case got an equal amount of love in the design process. There are the brushed case flanks, circular brushed lugs, polished bevels and drilled lug holes for easy strap changes. Unlike many two button chronograph movements, the stop function shares the reset button rather than the start button. So the top pusher starts the timer and the bottom pusher stops and resets. Those who follow me on Instagram know that I'm a bit of a strap junkie and that I would be the first to change straps. But when Miro pairs with a strap brand like Molequin, you know it's gonna be good. Each watch comes with one soft silky and French Nubuk leather strap and there is an additional Tropic rubber strap included. I really like the tone of the green rubber strap, so fingers crossed that these will be made available separately too. If you already own a previous Bonaire model, you know how good these rubber straps are. 
But as much as a strap junkie that I am, nothing beats a good steel bracelet. The steel 3 link bracelet will be made available to be purchased separately. I didn't get a chance to size it to my wrist exactly, but it reminded me very much of the oyster style bracelet on my Oris. And yes, those rivets are the real thing. The bracelet has a nice taper and the whole watch has a pretty substantial feel on the wrist. The wearing experience felt pleasant and I would compare this watch to how my Speedmaster feels on the wrist. Only when I was making this video I realized that this watch has a slightly bigger lug to lug over the Speedmaster but I didn't notice it to wear bigger, probably because of the smaller case size. That the watch looks equally good on a leather, tropical or bracelet is only a compliment to the great design of the full package. This finishes my grand tour of the new Antigua. These watches will retail at 1750 and should be available at the time of publishing this video. 100 pieces of each will be made. I realize I might sound biased, but I think these are priced really competitive and while there is some competition in the chrono segment, I feel that this one has the best design of the bunch and being able to stare at the movement is just a cherry on the cake. It was a privilege to get some front row seats and getting to know not only the brand but also Stan. You can tell from the way he talks about watches that he is really a watch enthusiast first and that really shows throughout the whole design and execution of the watch. I'm very curious to hear what you think of these, what is your favorite of the two and who is getting one. If you have any questions drop them in the comments or come find me on Instagram. Don't forget to like and subscribe, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.